and, and typically any visit by a Japanese official to this war shrine uh, will ignite a firestorm of criticism from around the region. But the last time a serving Japanese prime minister actually visited was back in 2006. So, of course, the fact that Shinzo Abe went there today uh, has brought uh, extra heavy condemnation. Now, the Chinese, on the one hand, have condemned the visit, saying in their words that this beautifies Japan's history of military invasion and colonization in the region. The South Korean culture ministry has also come out in just the last few minutes saying that this visit by Prime Minister Abe is beyond deplorable and uh, stirs them to anger. But really, it, this visit and the condemnation shows two things. First of all, that almost 70 years after the end of World War II, that nerves are still very raw about Japan's uh, history of wartime atrocities, not only in, during World War II, but during the colonization of the Korean Peninsula through much of the early part of the 20th century and through its wars uh, with China. What it also reflects as well is growing concern at the foreign policy stance of the government of Shinzo Abe. He himself has said that he wants to revise Japan's pacifist constitution to allow a greater international and regional role for Japan's military forces, even to the point of allowing its military forces to fight for uh, friends and allies in the region. And so that then stirs powers like China, like South Korea, interfering that Japan could be on the verge of some nationalist return to its military past, which could affect them. Because remember, those wartime atrocities uh, extend very widely, uh, not only to the mass murder and torture of, uh, of opposing forces, but also things like forced labor and sex slavery. And as I say, the legacy of that certainly has not been forgotten, either in the Korean Peninsula or in China, Natalie. Uh, absolutely. So when Shinzo Abe said he's looking for more involvement regionally from Japan, does, <clears throat> does that message correlate with the timing of this visit to the shrine today? Is there any particular reason he stated why now? Well, well, first of all, I mean, it, the, the, the actual timing, it marks the first uh, year in office of uh, Mr. Abe's uh, period. Um, so, so that on the one hand, he himself has issued a statement trying to explain his actions. Uh, he said that uh, he simply went to pray to the souls of all the war dead, not just a small group that were classed as war criminals uh, post-World War II. Uh, and he said he went to make a pledge that this would be a period of peace without any more war. I think we've got some sound of what he said, so let's take a listen to that. <laughs> There is criticism based on a misunderstanding that visiting Yasukuni is an act that honors war criminals. But my intention was to report what I have done for the last year to those who sacrificed their lives for their country. I also wanted to show my commitment to bringing about a peaceful world where people will never again have to suffer in wars. I have no intention of hurting the feelings of the people of China or South Korea. So Prime Minister Abe is certainly downplaying his visit there and certainly rejecting any suggestion that this Shinto shrine is in fact a monument to Japan's wartime atrocities. Uh, but also one might suggest that he took a calculated risk. He knew this was going to spark condemnation, but he doesn't really care because relations with China on the one hand are already very frayed. And uh, public opinion in South Korea of Japan has never been very good anyway. In a recent survey by a Seoul-based think tank, uh, most South Koreans really distrust Prime Minister Abe almost as much as they distrust a North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un.